Today's video, we're going to be checking out the new NECA toys, Guillermo del Toro, figure number one, the Devil's Backbone, Sante. One of the most personal films by Guillermo del Toro, The Devil's Backbone, is also the most frightening and emotionally layered. Set during the final week of the Spanish Civil War, tells the tale of a 12-year-old boy who, after his freedom-fighting father is killed, is sent to a haunted rural orphanage full of terrible secrets. Del Toro expertly combines gothic ghost story, murder mystery, and historical melodrama in a stylish melange that reminds us that the scariest monsters are often the human ones. How about the first thing that we do is figure out how tall Sante stands. Sante, or Sante, stands just about 5 inches. I caught it at about 4.9 inches, but the figure is very small, about 5 inches in length. Now, switching that over to centimeters, that works out to be 12.6 centimeters high. He is small, but to the credit of NECA toys, they also give you a whole bunch of other stuff that come included with him. Uh, for starters, he comes with this display base, which will actually also house the missile that will be sitting into the top. I'll show you that in a second. There's also a few little connector points that will house these little tiny plants, these little dead decaying plants. Um, from just the display base, you kind of see like a sandy ter uh, terrain and some little pebbles and stuff like that and rocks around it. There's really actually no connector points for Sante to stand on. His bare feet, you can see, has no peg holes on the undersides. So you're really just standing him on top of it. To be fair, if you're not like waving around the display base, the figure stands perfectly fine on it. There's no issues where it necessarily would require a peg. And I guess at the very least, one thing that's good about it not having pegs is it doesn't dictate where specifically you have to display the figure. You could have it over there. You could, again, have it over here. Wherever he, the little tiny boy, is able to balance himself. Okay, so then we also get ourselves this decayed, rusted missile, something that has landed and, of course, not detonated. You can see it's been given this really neat-looking uh, wash to it to make it look like it's rusted. It's been there for a very long period of time. On the side, you got NK122829, which is also carried over on this side as well. You can see that they've even kind of chipped and scratched the paint away just to kind of give it that look that it's old. It is hollow. Um, there is no real substantial weight to it. Not that it would necessarily need a whole lot of weight anyways. And when you are ready to connect it, if you put it just on a table surface, you'll see that it sits to the side. Um, it does balance pretty good, but it will, it will topple over for you. But there is this little notch on the side of the missile. And uh, you're just going to take that. See this little groove right there? You're going to line the two up. And once that's in place, just kind of give it a good little bit of force pushing that in place. And instantly you've got yourself a nice little neat diorama. To go along and add to that, we've got these three plants that don't look like they're that much different from one another. You could argue the point that the paint is slightly varied from one to the other. Uh, as well, I'm sure if you were to show me your pots that came included with your figure, the paint probably will be randomized. It's not necessarily a case where they look all identical to one another. Clearly, it looks though as all three plants are dead and have been dead. I want to say not for a long period of time because like they're still green to them. But you can see that the decaying brown has started to make its way across the top of the vines. They're neat looking pots and they actually attach to... Let me just lift this up again. They attach to these little holes right here. I'm curious as to why NECA gave us slots instead of holes. It almost seems as if at one point they decided to change their mind or nonetheless a slot is a more accurate way of keeping it affixed like if you plug it into place. I don't know why they again didn't use holes. These slots to me doesn't make any sense whatsoever but we're gonna go ahead and plug those into place. Some of them plug in better than others like this one here for example. 
And last, but certainly not least, we'll plug the last plant here. And again, it's just a matter of not necessarily even lining them up, but just getting them forcefully planted. I guess maybe because it is slotted, the slot is more maybe a little bit more narrower than the plug. So when the plug goes through it, it forces it and uh, it means that it's permanently, well, not permanently going to be there, but at the very least, it's a lot easier and uh, more permanently affixed than, say, if you were used a circular peg and putting it through a circular hole. That's the only logic I can come up with for that. So there is the display base. It gives you a little extra something because I think the figure on its own, it's too small just to be packaged on its own with a few accessories. By giving it the extra display base, NECA's factoring in for the fact that the price point on these are about the same price point as a regular seven inch tall figure. You're just getting a much smaller character as a result of it. So having a look at Santi, I'm just gonna move this over to the side. He's a really neat looking character. I look at him and kind of reminds me of kind of reminds me of a couple of things. It reminds me of The Boy, if you ever if anyone had ever seen the movie The Boy. Um, and it also kind of reminds me of a little sister from Bioshock. I think what's really giving it me that little sister look, even though this would be a brother, is sort of the pale dexterity, the pale uh, skin color here that they've given his face. Also, can't help but notice he's got this crack on the side of his head. Now, I'm not seeing the movie just yet. I'm not really sure. I'm guessing he's probably dead, and maybe the crack is, you know, the inflicted uh, wound that killed him, but he's definitely discolored. I'm very anxious to see the movie to actually see how the character all plays out. The body type, from what I can understand and what I'm seeing here, looks like it's brand new, a brand new mold that NECA is using. And certainly NECA always tries to make use of similar molds for future figures. So I'm hoping that this mold may be used for, say, for example, for a young Jason Voorhees or a smaller. They could even really do a boy. Of course, his pants would be not shredded like this. And I think his sleeves are full length sleeves. But he does, I think he does have a V-neck sweater here. So it's certainly something that they could maybe entertain the idea one thing as I review figures like this, the thing I always try to do is I try to look at the figure and think to myself, what has the mold been used for before and what can the mold be used for moving forward? He's got some nice tears and stuff, just aged looking ripped away pants. I'm assuming that these were pants at one point. The feet are very nicely sculpted as well. You can even see like the little wrinkles on the, on the under soles of his feet. Very discolored, sort of chalk white. It's only the little few indicators here on like his toes, for example, and also on his fingers that you see he's got more flesh tone happening right there while the rest of it is really a powdery, chalky white. Love the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt's really good. It almost looks like he's leaking something out from his eyes. His eyes are almost pitch black with this outline. I like how they've done the outline in blue. So it still gives you the noticing appearance of a pupil but the eyeball as a whole is all jet black. I like the hair sculpt. I like they use two different colors for the hair sculpt as well. Dark brown on the top, a lighter shade of brown underneath there. Nice texturing that's been added to the sweater. They've added a little bit of dirt add, added there as well. He's a really neat looking figure. Just I don't have a lot of source material to base the figure from. I'd have to see the movie to get a better feel and read for what specifically is this character's backstory. Again, we got a little bit of it on the back of the package, but other than that, I'm really curious to see where this is going to go. Now, the Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, I know it's always something I have struggled saying, Guillermo del Toro is also producing, uh, I think, four figures as a whole. Ophelia, the Fawn, the Pale Man, and of course, Santi that we're having a look at right here. This just so happens to be figure number one, but based on what I'm seeing right here, there's a whole lot of potential happening, not only to open the world of Guillermo del Toro's films, but also seeing some of the stuff that NECA can then pr produce here in plastic. Now, speaking of plastic and speaking of figures, let's go ahead and have a look at Santi's articulation. His head swivels all the way around. It has a nice job of being able to angle left and right. That's always a big plus for me. Is that kind of ridiculous, though, that that's a big plus for me? Especially certain characters, if you want to add a little bit of creepiness to them, I always like to kind of display them with the head slightly tilted. I do that a lot with like the Jason Voorhees figures, for example. So the head moves up and down, like I said, back and forth, all the way around. Uh, the arms hinge outward. Got to be a little bit more careful because there's smaller things happening here on this figure versus the larger figures. He's got a bend at the elbow. 
He has a rotation where the elbow bends, and he also has a swivel in the hand, which is actually more so like a well, it's a ball joint, but then there's a hinge on on the ball on the ball joint that's connected to it, so it hinges, but then it also allows you to rotate the hands as well. He has a waist swivel, kind of actually more so a waist ball joint. Uh, legs go forward, legs go back, legs go out. He's got a bend at the knee, which also does the exact same thing that the forearm does. You can rotate, rotate it technically all the way around. I don't know why you would want to, but just to show you that he can do that. Ankle pivot, hinging back and forth on the feet, and you can rotate the feet all the way around. Kind of liking the fact also that they started the Guillermo del Toro lineup with figure one, one being Sante. I mean, they could easily have gone with Pale Man, or they could have also gone with the Fawn, which are a much bigger statured figures but this kind of gives you a good starting point starting with a little bit something smaller and working our way up to the much bigger grander characters of the same lineup if you remember we were alluded to the fact that we were going to be getting a Guillermo del Toro lineup when we had a look at Guillermo del Toro in the retro cloth figure packaging made notation that it was going to be leading into the signature collection here we have the first figure of that uh, I think as far as I know, Pale Man or Fawn, one of those two should be hitting stores soon. So, of course, when I those come out, I'm going to want to definitely pick those ones up as well. I'm more familiar with Pale Man and Fawn than I am, say, for example, of Sante. I'm very interested to see how this movie plays out. It's probably going to, like I said, as the packaging dictates, a much more emotional roller coaster of a film. Still chock full of scares and jumps and stuff like that as well. I like this figure quite a bit. I'm liking it also for the fact that we are getting a brand new sculpt. And when I see sculpts this small, it opens the doorway for potentially new figures down the road of this small stature. If you can think of some figures that, for example, characters of this small size that you would like to see NECA toys maybe make use of, making use of this mold, let me know down below in the comments section. In the meantime, if you guys are interested in picking up the Devil's Backbone Santi, he is now available in comic book stores. The price point on this guy, at least here in Canada, is about $35. About the same price as what you would expect to pay for a regular NECA toys, or about the same price as what you're going to be paying for this guy as well. Today we were having a look at the NECA toys Guillermo del Toro. This was the Devil's Backbone from the Guillermo del Toro Signature Collection. A really neat looking figure. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? More videos, more NECA videos will be coming your way soon. If you also want to go back and have a look at some of the other NECA reviews that I've done, there's a whole playlist just for you. And one thing that can guarantee you that if you think along the ways when you've been watching, say, this video, I wonder if he's done any videos within the last week. Yeah, there's probably a good chance that I have. Best way to figure out what you have missed out on is swing over to the main page when you're finished this video and just check out the videos that are there. All the thumbnails will tell you all the stuff that I posted in recent memory and all future videos will be there as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.